Now we're going to look at the revaluation of assets on acquisition. Sometimes there may be errors in valuations or things may have been left off or some disagreements, uh, whatever, for whatever reason, some assets may need revaluing uh, immediately upon acquisition. Uh, we're going to look at the impact of that and how to uh, address that in the accounts. So we've got here a simple balance sheet for a subsidiary. We're not looking at the parent at this stage. Um, we have some depreciable non-current assets, some, sorry, depreciable and some non-depreciable non-current assets, some standard inventory and bank. Uh, the rest of the equity section is pretty standard, equity shares, retained earnings, and then liabilities. Um, down below, we have our revaluation schedule, uh, and the directors have uh, come up with these estimates of the revaluations for the assets. So we have the depreciable assets uh, revalued up at plus 50, non-depreciable at one, uh, 10,000, and inventory at 20,000. And these were all sold within the year. So what we're going to do is a simple uh, recasting of the balance sheet uh, at the date of acquisition. This is the date of acquisition, and we're going to redo it, including these adjustments. It's very easy. We just simply uh, add the adjustments where appropriate. So depreciable non-current assets is 40,000, sorry, 400,000 plus 50. Non-depreciable. 100 plus 10. Inventory, another 100 plus 20. Bank is just bank. Uh, and that gives us a total of 700,000. Uh, uh, does that make sense? 620 plus 80 equals 700. So that seems to be working quite well. Um, so that's the first half of the balance sheet, the asset side. Uh, let's just cast across the uh, liability side. Equity shares, retained earnings. That gives us a total there uh, of 500. Liabilities of 120. Uh, and that will give us uh, a figure of 620 as before. Now then. Of course, it doesn't balance anymore. So we've made adjustments to the um, uh, asset side. We've adjusted these assets upwards, but we've made no adjustment to the liability side. So we're going to have to do that so that the balance sheet balances. We can't really adjust equity because nothing's happened to equity, and we can't adjust the liabilities either. Our only option is to revalue retained earnings and that's a calculated figure anyway so we can add to our brought forward retained earnings the total upwards revaluation of all the assets and if we add 80 to that side that's going to enable our balance sheet to balance now what does this mean it means that our uh, retained earnings at the date of acquisition is now increased so when we do our uh, goodwill calculations, when we do our uh, retained earnings calculations for the uh, consolidated statement of, of financial position, we're going to have to use this new figure and take into account all these adjustments. Uh, so it does have an impact. Let's move forward one year, plus one year, uh, and see what would have happened, because uh, some of these assets uh, have a timed component. For example, the depreciation, or the depreciable non-current assets, had a five-year life. So every year, this adjustment is going to be dropping or depreciating itself by one-fifth or 20% over its five-year life. So we can reduce uh, this figure by minus, and it's going to be one fifth of the depreciated adjustment, which should take us down 10,000, and it does four, uh, 450,000 to, to 440, 
at the end of one year. So that makes sense. We've lost some to depreciation and that will happen every year for the next, well, this one year and four further years. The non-depreciable non-current assets, well, they're going to stay the same unless there's an independent uh, revaluation or adjustment or impairment. Um, but uh, as far as this is concerned, so the adjustments, there's no further adjustment to make. And inventory, well, we've sold all these during the year, so we don't need to include this adjustment again. Uh, so we can go back to assuming no other uh, no other movement in the in the business over the year of course that's very unlikely uh, just as an example uh, uh, we will just remove that inventory adjustments so that now gives us a new figure for total assets of 670,000 uh, of course as before this hasn't changed equity shares is still 100,000 and retained earnings well, that is going to have to be reduced uh, by the same uh, reductions we've made here. So we've taken off uh, 10,000 for the depreciation and we've taken off 20,000 for the inventory that's been sold. So that's going to take us to 450. Add that up comes to 550 liabilities hasn't changed and then this figure is just the sum of these two great always a good sign when it balances uh, so let's just review what we've done highlight these so that they we know they balanced know what we're looking at uh, for the on the date of acquisition we adjusted uh, as appropriate any of the assets that we we acquired uh, and in doing so we've had to revalue the retained earnings which will then have an impact on the goodwill calculation on the retained earnings calculation uh, and the um, NCI calculation uh, the after one year um, the depreciation will have impacted the adjustment here so we've lost one year's worth of that adjustment and the inventory has all been sold uh, so we don't need that adjustment anymore either uh, uh, and that's it um, we can then use these figures for our end of year or post act uh, 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 figures for the statement of financial position